if I told you that for $15, you could play D&D &D out of this box. Is that something you might be interested in? What is going on, guys, and welcome back to Going Analog. My name is Baus Phoenix, and today I've got this awesome little game in a box for you called Dungeon Roll. This game is designed by Chris Darden and published by Tasty Minstrel Games. It's a one to four player dungeon delving experience, and it's got a lot of a roguelike feel to it. One of my favorite features to this game is, like I said, it has that one to four player group limit, so you can play this totally by yourself, and the game pretty much basically runs on its own AI. Now, I listen to a lot of your guys' feedback, and the one thing I want to do is show you guys uh, an example of a turn so we'll do that here in a second but first uh, this game basically goes for about $15 and it's got the full game experience right here in this box there are a couple of expansions for it and those come in the form of little packs of cards and everything I have all the expansions and everything everything fits in the treasure chest here which is actually a component for the game as well as the game's packaging and storage which I think is super awesome so the objective to this game, what you're trying to do, the whole reason for playing it is every turn you're going to be building a party with your set of dungeon die. You're then going to be playing against the dungeon, and if you have another player with you, that player is going to be the dungeon master. So it's very similar to like a little game of D&D, &D. very cool. If you were to apply this kind of theme to a video game, I would say it very closely resembles a roguelike. So if you like Binding of Isaac, Enter the Gungeon, They Bleed Pixels, any of those kind of games like that, this is going to have a very similar feel. Every round you're drafting a new party, you're going into the dungeon, things are reset, and basically the objective here is you're trying to get the most experience points in the game. So as you can see, I mean, this little tiny box comes packed with a ton of stuff. You've got your hero cards here, you've got various treasure tokens and XP tokens. These are certain rewards that you're going to be getting as you delve deeper and deeper into the dungeon. You've got your party die here, you've got your dungeon die, the dungeon die are the black ones, and then you got your party die, which are the white ones here. Very cool, and then you've got a little 10-sided die with a dragon face on the 10 that is really, really nice here. Everything is super well designed, and then you've also got some player aids that comes with it. Now, like I said before, there are expansions you can get. There's a couple different expansions out right now, and they come in the form of just extra cards, and all of those... All of those expansions will fit in the box so everything you buy even the base game plus the expansions all fits in this little box which is really nice makes it super portable and super easy to take around with you one more thing because I'm super forgetful and I like to get ahead of myself a lot uh, the game also comes with a neat little instruction booklet it's pretty small it may look like it's kind of big if you do this but then you got to remember that the pages are basically this big so there's that your little instruction book on how to play the game and then it also has this little encyclopedia for all the characters Characters that are in the game it tells you the anatomy of their cards you get to see the actual picture of the card and what the ability does a little more in detail than what may be listed on the card so I think that's really nice that they included that so that way you're not going to the internet or looking at other videos trying to figure out what these characters actually do because some of the text is a little ambiguous on the cards and it's nice to have this little reference here Okay, so here we are at the table I'm gonna show you guys just a quick round of how you would play this solo the rules really aren't any different at all if you're playing this with a group of people or you know with one other person so I'll just show you how this sets up the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna pick a hero now you can pick these randomly or you can just pick whatever one you want now I was tweeting at tasty minstrel games today and they were like when you do this video you have to play as the undead Viking and I haven't actually played as this guy yet this guy apparently he has a specialty ability which you can use any time and essentially what that is when forming the party removing remove two die from the game and take five champions instead of rolling so that's kind of cool I could see how that would be useful but anyway I'm not gonna use those abilities I'm just gonna have him as like my avatar I guess and show you how a, a turn would just be played so the first thing you want to do is you want to take all seven of these white die here and you're gonna roll them so give them a good shake and roll them here whatever you roll you don't flip the die you just keep them where they lay and you put them all together this is gonna be the party that you're going into the dungeon with now I'm kind of in a little bit of trouble here I don't really have a very diverse party because certain party members are actually good against certain other monsters and if you really want to learn how to play this game you can check out my video on heroic attacks channel they're the comic book shop that I work with we do a lot of how-to videos I'm just gonna kind of get set up and play so I've got my party here I rolled my die I got my party and I'm gonna go ahead and set up the dungeon so you always start on the first level of the dungeon makes sense right you wouldn't start at like level 10 or whatever so you set your dungeon die to the one side you put that there 
And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll one dungeon die. So you roll one die for every level of the dungeon you're on. Then. So let's go ahead and play real quick. So first level, I'm gonna roll the black dungeon die and let's see what we get. So I got an ooze, that's a monster. And before I go to the next level of the dungeon, I've gotta kill that before I can progress. And we've gotta fight this ooze to get to the next level. Essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick one party member from my roster here to go and fight against this ooze. Basically all I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take my fighter, I'm gonna make him get rid of this ooze. The general rule of this game is one die to one monster, unless that hero is good against that type of monster. So I'm gonna use my fighter, he's gonna kill this ooze, and my fighter becomes exhausted after killing that one measly ooze. Okay, so we just killed our first monster, and now we have several choices. We can keep going and delve deeper into the dungeon, increasing our level and our threat, so we'll be rolling more and more die. That was pretty easy, there wasn't much of a challenge there, and we've still got a roster of six heroes left over. So, if I was really playing, I would definitely continue going. But let's say that maybe we had a bad first level or something like that, which is pretty much impossible. What you can do is you can retire after you defeat the dungeon. So let's say I, I go down to the second level and I beat whatever threat's down there and I decide, you know what, I'm going to retire, I'm going to cut my losses, and I'm going to get out of here. What you then do is you grab an experience token or experience tokens based on the amount of levels that you were in the dungeon for. So let's say that I get down to level 4 and I decide that I want to take off. I decide the four levels, I've had a really bad time here, I'm ready to get back to the town, drink some ale, and while away my woes. So, I'm gonna go ahead and take four experience points. You take the Roman numeral one and the Roman numeral three, and that goes in your pile, and then you pass the die to the next person, or you go another round if you're playing by yourself. And that's pretty much how the game works. It's fairly simple. Like I said though, if you're looking for a more in-depth explanation of the rules, you can check out our video at Heroic Attack. I've got that one up there that I did with those guys. You guys should have a pretty good understanding of how to play the game after you've watched that. So how do we wrap it all up? What's the point to all this? The one thing I wanted to do is kind of give this game a little bit of an arbitrary review based on a point system that I totally just made up not too long ago. So I judge this game on several different criteria. I've got the components, the replay value, the gameplay, the art design, and the overall value of the game, i.e. what you get for your money. For the components, I gave this game a 4 out of 5, because the card art is really nice and everything, but it's kind of flimsy. I don't feel like these could really stand up to a lot of wear and tear. I feel like they kind of fall apart really easily, and you gotta be really careful with them. Also, they're slightly oversized, and I don't think I've found sleeves that would fit these, so that's kind of a problem for me. Everything else... The other paper components, like these little tokens, the die, everything else is designed very well. Everything's clearly printed on the cards. It's super easy to see everything. The art looks really good. As far as the replay value goes, there are so many different heroes to this game. If you add in the expansions, and not even counting what we've got for the base set, every game you play is going to be different somehow, and I think that's awesome. That to me says roguelike, and that's one of the reasons I really enjoy it. As far as the gameplay goes, again, that kind of goes into the same vein as the replay value. It's a lot of fun, this game is addicting, it's pressure luck, it's like gambling, dungeon diving, you're fighting monsters, it's got a fantasy setting, I mean, it's, it's a very, very safe theme, and I think it's a lot of fun. It's a little generic, sure, but I mean, the way it's presented is very nice, and it's a lot of fun to play. As far as the art design goes, I really like the designs on the cards. The art is very nicely done. I feel like a true badass when I'm playing these characters, they look really cool, they have neat abilities, and you know, just the overall design of the, the packaging, uh, the little tokens I feel like are, you know, kind of a little bit of an afterthought, and that's why I gave the art design a 4 out of 5. As far as the value goes, what you get for what you're paying for, you cannot beat $15 for this much game, for this much replay value, for as fun as this is, and the fact that you can play it solo. So if it's literally just you, you're going to have a really good time with this game. Now, overall, I'm going to go ahead and give this game 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half Santas out of 5. I give this game 4 and a half Santas out of 5. I mean, I don't think anybody's ever used Santas for a rating system, but I think that would pretty accurately, accurately depict how good this game is. I really enjoy it, in all honesty, this is one of my favorite games. This is one that me and my girlfriend bust out all the time when we're not really sure we want to play. It's a lot of fun, it's easy to take places, it's easy to teach, and best of all, it's really, really cheap. For $15, 
You cannot beat what comes inside this box. Guys, that's been another episode of Going Analog. Again, I'm Bows Phoenix. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you at the next video.